the royal family either kill Kate Middleton, like Diana, or her lover, or both? Why is she missing? This is the most extreme of the theories out there, but given how obvious it is that the royal family is hiding something... I really want to know who this woman is and why she was just born into a ruling family and we're supposed to accept that. I do not understand this concept. People are talking about Pope Francis because he recently revealed some of the royal family's best-kept secrets. This news caused a huge stir in the media and led to discussions about what it might mean for the British royalty, a family history that is already notorious for scandals. In a recent interview, Pope Francis revealed some shocking facts and insights about the royal family. For example, he revealed the truth about what happened to Princess Diana and gave many examples of times when King Charles almost got arrested. Let's talk about who Pope Francis is and why we should pay attention to what he says before we get into the specifics of what he said. Pope Francis is the leader of the Catholic Church and the ruler of Vatican City State. He was born Jorge Mario Bergoglio on December 17, 1936. He was the first Jesuit Pope, the first Pope from the Americas, and the first Pope from the Southern Hemisphere. He is also the first Pope since Pope Gregory III of Syria in the 8th century to have been born or raised outside of Europe. Bergoglio is from Buenos Aires, Argentina, and worked as a bouncer and janitor as a child. Later, he went to school for chemistry and became a worker in a food science lab. He was moved to join the Jesuits in 1958 after getting better from a serious illness that included pneumonia and cysts. His first job was as a Catholic priest in 1969. From 1973 to 1979, he was Argentina's Jesuit provincial superior. His first job was as Archbishop of Buenos Aires in 1998. The next year, Pope John Paul II made him a cardinal. He was in charge of the Argentine Church during the protests in December 2001. After Pope Benedict XVI quit on February 28, 2013, Bergoglio was chosen as his replacement by a group of bishops on March 13. He named himself Francis to honor St. Francis of Assisi. People have praised Pope Francis for being humble, focusing on divine kindness, being well-known around the world as the leader of the Catholic Church, caring about the poor, and wanting to encourage dialogue between different religions. He is known for being more approachable as a pope than his predecessors. One example is that he chose to live in the Domus Sancte Marthe guesthouse instead of the usual papal apartments in the Apostolic Palace. By putting women in important roles in the Roman Curia, Francis has taken steps to promote inclusion. His message is to be more accepting of LGBT people, and he stresses that even though blessings for same-sex relationships are not allowed, people can still receive blessings outside of liturgical settings. He has been a strong opponent of unchecked capitalism, materialism, and too much growth. As Pope, he has made fighting climate change a top priority. Furthermore, many people think that he is against the death sentence because he says that it is inadmissible and an insult to human dignity. He has made it clear that the church will work to its end, saying that there is no going back from this position. When it comes to foreign relations, Pope Francis has spoken out against the rise of right-wing populism and pushed for homosexuality to no longer be illegal. He was very important in getting full diplomatic ties between the U.S. and Cuba back on track. He also worked out an agreement with China that made it clear that the Communist Party has a say in who becomes a Chinese bishop. During the refugee crisis in Europe and Central America, he also spoke out for the plight of refugees. In 2022, he deeply apologized for the church's role in what he called the cultural genocide of Canada's native people. From the start, Francis has pushed for a ministry that welcomes everyone, including Christians who aren't Catholic and people who aren't Christian. Early in his time as Pope, he touched the feet of two young women, one of whom was Muslim, during the Maundy Thursday performance of Jesus washing the disciples' feet. This made traditionalists talk. This action was especially important because, according to church custom, women were not allowed to take part in the ceremony, which usually only had male apostles. Francis took a step forward in 2016 when he changed the traditions of Holy Week so that women and girls could take part. This is a man who fights for what's right and truly cares about other people. It's not a surprise that he felt forced to spill the royal family's most private information. Switzerland Incident
In March 1988, Prince Charles and Princess Diana went on one of their usual skiing trips to the Swiss Alps exclusive Klosters Resort. On March 10th, Charles began an exciting journey down the difficult slopes of Gotchnagrat Mountain. The Guardian said that these hills are some of the steepest in Switzerland. They are usually closed to the public, so only experienced skiers like Prince Charles can use them. Charles was with a mountain guide named Bruno Sprecher and a group of friends that day. These friends included Major Hugh Lindsay, who used to be the Queen's equerry, Patty Palmer Tompkinson, and a Swiss police officer. The group was not on the prepared ski runs when an avalanche hit, killing everyone. According to what Buckingham Palace said at the time, the storm came from above the group and forced them to run for safety. Because it snowed a lot the day before, Hugh Lindsay and Patty Palmer Tompkinson were caught in the landslide. Lindsay was thrown 400 meters down the slope and buried under the snow, while Palmer Tompkinson hurt his legs badly. Luckily, Prince Charles and the rest of the group got out of the water unhurt and rushed to help their hurt friends. The BBC said as soon as the danger had passed, Prince Charles, the guide, and a Swiss police officer who was skiing with the party raced back to help the victims, digging with their bare hands in the snow to reach them. Speaking to Palmer Tompkinson while they were waiting for help, Sprecher performed mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Later, Charles thanked Sprecher for saving her life. Lindsay and Palmer Tompkinson were both flown to a hospital in the nearby town of Davos. Sadly, Lindsay was already dead when they got there. Lindsay, who was 34 years old, and his wife Sarah, who worked in the press office at Buckingham Palace, were very excited about the birth of their child. In the 1980s, he worked as the Queen's equerry for a few years. In 1986, he went back to full-time army service. Charles was clearly devastated when he heard the sad news of his friend's death. Several witnesses said he looked very upset, and some said they saw him crying. Despite this, he was able to walk to the chopper without any apparent injuries. In later years, Charles went back to Klosters several times with his kids William and Harry in the 1990s. The Telegraph reported that Diana, on the other hand, never went back to the island after what happened. Andrew Morton wrote Diana, her true story, in her own words, which came out in 1992 and is about how Diana felt about the accident. A courtier told her and Sarah Ferguson, the Duchess of York, that there had been an accident on the hills while they were staying in the chalet on March 10th. He wrote, For what seemed like an eternity, the princess and her sister-in-law sat at the top of the steps, barely able to breathe, let alone move, while they waited for more news. Soon after, Prince Charles called Philip Mackey to reassure him that he was okay and to break the sad news that Major Hugh Lindsay had died. During the first waves of pain, everyone started to shiver. Morton went into more detail about how Diana took care of Charles in the days after the accident, especially how she tried to keep him from going back to the slopes. At first, the prince wasn't sure if they should cancel their trip, but Diana was set on ending it. She knew he was shocked and couldn't fully understand how terrible things were at that time. Diana felt completely in charge of a tough situation for once. She was in charge and told the prince that it was his job to bring Hugh's body back to Britain. So the three cut short their holiday and started their journey back to the UK with the bodies on March 12th. The whole thing was awful, Diana told Morton in her interview. Cindy was a really nice person. He should not have been the one. Even though Prince Charles is clearly sad about the death, many people think he is partly to blame for Lindsay's death. They say that he knew his friends weren't as good at skiing as he was, but he still put their safety at risk by taking them to Gotchnagrat Mountain. There were rumors that he should have been arrested for being so careless, but as is often the case with powerful people, he got away with everything. Black Spider Memos The Black Spider Memos are a group of letters and memos that King Charles of the United Kingdom wrote to British politicians and government officials over a number of years while he was the Prince of Wales. Because Charles was the oldest child of Queen Elizabeth II and the likely heir to the British throne, these messages caused a lot of trouble. Concerns were raised about Charles's ability to have too much of an effect on government ministers even though the letters were sent in a private capacity. This was because Charles had always spoken out about many issues such as farming, genetic engineering, global warming, poverty, planning, and architecture. The Black Spider letters got their name from Charles's unique handwriting. Not much was known about what they said until May 13, 2015, when the Information Tribunal ordered that most of the letters be made public. 
The story started in 2010 when Rob Evans, a reporter for The Guardian, used the British Freedom of Information Act to ask to see Charles's letters to ministers from 2004 and 2005. After a lot of legal problems, Attorney General Dominic Grieve turned down the request in October 2012. After that, the case was taken to the Supreme Court, which agreed with the government and released the letters in March 2015. At the time of these events, the media called Charles a meddling prince, but the letters were well received, and the Prince of Wales gained a lot of support from the public. That the Black Spider memos were made public was underwhelming, according to Dina Spector of Business Insider. She gave three reasons why the British people might feel the same way. First, the people who had read the memos said that the material was mostly harmless. Second, the letters would be made public with redactions to protect the privacy of third parties, even if they held information that could be harmful. Lastly, it was pointed out that Charles did not write up to 10 of the 27 letters that were made public. Those letters were typed instead of being written by hand in his unique Black Spider style. In an article for The Daily Telegraph, historian Andrew Roberts said that the release of Charles's letters hurt those who were trying to hurt him and showed how silly the human rights business is. He said that the memos showed how passionate and honorable Charles was. Simon Jenkins of The Guardian also said that black spiders aren't as dangerous as the multi-million pound tarantulas of political pressure that hasn't been mapped out or made public. Behind that curtain, most of the time, Prince Charles behaves more as a bit of a bore on behalf of his good causes than as any kind of wannabe feudal tyrant, The Guardian wrote in an editorial. Clarence House spoke up for King Charles, stressing how much he cared about the country and his plans to use his special position to help others. The statement said that he brought up problems that the public cared about and looked for workable solutions, while also defending his right to write privately. They said that publishing his letters might make it harder for him to talk about the worries and ideas that other people brought up in meetings and other events. Finding out about the Black Spider notes wasn't the first time King Charles tried to keep a secret, but it did show how closely people were watching his private conversations and public image. The Queen Consort Different stories have different details about when and how Prince Charles and Camilla Shand met. The BBC says they met in 1970 at a polo event in Windsor Great Park. People magazine says that they met for the first time at a party in 1972, where Camilla, then 25 years old, allegedly told Charles, My great-grandmother was the mistress of your great-great-grandfather. I feel like we share something. It's clear that they had something in common, no matter which story is true. Before Charles joined the Royal Navy in 1971, he was seeing Camilla, but their connection cooled while he was in the Navy. He dated her for six months, but didn't ask her to marry him before he left for duty in February 1973. As a result, Camilla married Andrew Bowles instead. An affair between Andrew and Camilla Parker Bowles led to the end of her marriage to Andrew. According to Penny Juner's book, The Duchess, Camilla Parker Bowles and the love affair that rocked the crown. Juner says Camilla might not have tried to get together with Charles if Andrew hadn't cheated on his sister. Catherine and Andrew Parker had two children, Laura Parker Bowles and Tom Parker Bowles. Charles was Tom's uncle. That's when Lady Diana Spencer met Prince Charles for the first time. He was interested in her sister, Lady Sarah Spencer, now McCorkwadale, at the time. Diana was only 16 when they met for the first time in 1977. She talked about it in a TV interview after she got engaged to Charles in 1981. It was 1977, Charles came to stay. He knew my sister Sarah. It was time for him to hunt. We kind of met in a field that had been plowed. Diana and Charles told everyone on February 24, 1981 that they were getting married. They did so just a few months later, on July 29, 1981. Diana had just turned 20 when they got married, and Charles was 32. Diana told author Andrew Morton in 1991 that she looked for Camilla in the crowd during her wedding to Charles. She said, I knew she was in there, of course. I tried to find her. As I walked down the aisle, I saw Camilla wearing a covered pillbox hat in a pale gray color. A son named Prince William was born in 1982, and a boy named Prince Harry was born in 1984. But things started to go badly in their marriage, and in 1992, they got an official separation. Four years later, they got a divorce.
Reports say that Charles and Camilla got back together in 1986, even though both of them were married at the time and had children. Diana said embarrassingly to BBC One's Panorama in 1995, there were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded, referring to Camilla. She also said that she tried to talk to Camilla about the affair, but didn't have much luck. Early in 1993, a secret phone call between Charles and Camilla was made public, proving that they were seeing each other. The royal family was very embarrassed by this news, especially after The Mirror published a transcript of the private talk in which they joked about Charles being reborn as a tampon. The details of this talk were big parts of why Charles and Diana's marriage ended and why Camilla and Andrew's marriage ended too. In the end, Camilla asked for a divorce in January 1995 and Charles and Diana's divorce was completed in August 1996. Princess Diana died in a terrible car accident in Paris on August 31, 1997, at the age of 36. The accident happened after a high-speed chase with reporters. Dodi Fayed, her millionaire boyfriend at the time, and their driver, Henri Paul, also died in the crash. After the tragedy, the royal family got a lot of bad press for what people saw as their slow and emotional reaction to it. Dodi's father said that Diana was pregnant at the time of the accident, that the car had been tampered with, and that MI6 was involved. An official investigation was started to look into these claims. In the end, the probe found that it was a terrible accident. Even so, there are still theories that the royal family had something to do with Diana's death. In 1998, The Guardian said that royal staff revealed that Prince William met Camilla Parker Bowles for the first time. Bowles was dating his father. After Charles and Diana's split, there seemed to be a push to make Camilla more well-known. This project was put on hold, though, after Diana's death. Prince Harry, who is younger than William, is said to have met Camilla later. <laughs> there were people in the royal family who didn't like Charles's friendship with Camilla. The Los Angeles Times reports that Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip attended Charles's 50th birthday party, but did not attend because they did not approve of their son's relationship with Camilla. This dislike fits with the Queen's goal of keeping a mostly good image, especially since the royal family has a history of being in the news and causing trouble. A family of scandals. Recent scandals involving the British royal family show a mix of personal problems and public attention, ranging from old scandals to new problems. In early 2024, Kensington Palace said that the Princess of Wales would be having surgery on her stomach, which would keep her from going on public events until at least the end of March. There was a lot of talk about her health and whereabouts after this news came out. It got worse when the palace released a heavily cropped picture of the princess with her three children which added to the rumors of a cover-up. The controversy involving King Charles III's brother, Prince Andrew, is still very much alive. People are paying a lot of attention to his ties to Ghislaine Maxwell and the late sex trafficker Jeffrey Epstein. Prince Andrew has called Epstein a friend, but it's still not clear how much he is involved in Epstein's crimes. He secretly settled a sexual assault claim, but since then, he has been kept away from royal duties and patronages while the family deals with the ongoing effects of the claims. When Prince Harry and Meghan Markle stopped doing royal tasks in January 2020, it caused even more trouble. Years of racist attacks on Markle in the British media led them to make their choice. There were also stories of rising tensions between the brothers, which may have been made worse by their wives. In 2021, after moving to California, Harry and Meghan gave an honest interview to Oprah Winfrey in which they talked about their personal problems. For example, they talked about how an unknown member of the royal family asked about the color of their son Archie's skin, which made the family look bad. They also said that the palace didn't give Meghan the mental health help she needed so badly when she was thinking about committing suicide. The current problems between the Princess of Wales and Prince Andrew and the historical effects of Harry and Meghan's departure show how complicated modern royal life is. They have to deal with personal problems as well as the expectations and scrutiny that come with their public roles. The William Harry fight came up again in 2023 and got a lot of attention from the media, especially after Prince Harry's book Spare came out. There were personal details in the book that brought up the brothers' tense relationship again. More fuel was added to the fire when reports spread that Prince William and Sarah Rose Cholmondley the Marchioness of Cholmondley, had an affair in 2019. 
It was said that this claim made Kate Middleton and Chomondley, who had been close friends, fight. People have said that the palace's public relations team tried to play down these affair claims while giving Meghan Markle very little help at a time when she was getting a lot of attention and abuse from the media. Some people think that the tabloids agreed not to look into the stories of William's alleged cheating in exchange for being able to say bad things about Meghan. In 2022, a blind story on Dumois brought these affair claims to light again, saying that Kate didn't like William's emotional involvement with Cholmondeley, even though she didn't mind the physical side of their relationship. In the meantime, Prince Harry was known as the bad boy of the royal family by 2005, when he was 21 years old. His behavior, which included going to parties and using drugs, made the news, and his controversial Halloween outfit with a Nazi armband was the cherry on top. People were angry right away, and Harry quickly apologized to the public for what happened. These stories show how personal relationships, media attention, and public opinion all work together to make the royal family complicated. They also show how actions and rumors from the past still affect how they interact with each other today. Sarah Ferguson, who people call Fergie, had a rough relationship with Prince Andrew. She married him in 1986 after a short three-month engagement. Even though they loved each other at first and had two daughters, the pair had problems because Andrew was in the military and had to be away for long periods of time. They broke up in 1992 and got divorced in 1996, but they were still friendly with each other. But Ferguson's deeds sometimes caused trouble for the royal family. In 1992, she was in the news when the Daily Mirror released revealing pictures of her on vacation with John Bryan, her financial advisor. The pictures of Brian having Ferguson's toes in his mouth caused a media frenzy and made a lot of people wonder about their relationship. Brian said he was just kissing her toes, but people had a lot of different ideas about what he meant. An undercover reporter from News of the World acted as a businessman and filmed Ferguson taking money to see Prince Andrew in 2010. This got Ferguson into more trouble. She later went on The Oprah Winfrey Show to say she was sorry and explain what she had done. She said that some of the money was meant to help a friend in need and the rest was meant to help her pay off her big bills. Ferguson admitted that she was spending more than she had and said that she had moved back in with Andrew because she could no longer pay rent. In an honest moment, she said that she took less money in the split so that she could keep her friendship with the royal family, especially Queen Elizabeth II. Ferguson's money problems led her to accept help from Jeffrey Epstein, who had already been found guilty of sex crimes against children at the time. Ferguson felt bad about working with Epstein and admitted that her financial choices were hard to understand and had an effect on her public image. Her problems show how hard it was for her to balance her personal and royal life, especially since the media was always looking at her. The younger sister of Queen Elizabeth II would have had a very different life if she had been born 50 years later. As things stood, Margaret had to follow the monarchy's strictest rules and her decision not to follow some customs paved the way for future generations. She fell deeply in love with group captain Peter Townsend, a war hero who left his wife to pursue a relationship with her. This story began. Even though they said they were getting married, the Church of England said that divorced people couldn't get married again while their ex-spouses were still living, and members of the royal family had to get permission from the monarch before getting married. Elizabeth eventually said no to Margaret's request to marry Peter, which caused a lot of debate. There could have been a civil ceremony, but Margaret put duty ahead of love and stopped the relationship. She married photographer Anthony Armstrong Jones in 1960 and had two children with him. But their marriage started to fall apart when Margaret started seeing the family handyman, who was almost 20 years younger than she was. In a different kind of story, King Edward VIII gave up the throne in 1936 to marry Wallace Simpson, an American socialite who had been separated and was not fit to be queen by royal standards. The couple lived abroad for most of their lives and stayed in touch with Nazis before World War II. When Edward gave up the throne, his brother George VI took it over. Later, his daughter Elizabeth II became queen. What Pope Francis has said, though, is most shocking when it comes to predictions, the prophecies. In his predictions, the French prophet Nostradamus said that a king of the isles would be driven out by force. Some people think that Nostradamus was talking about King Charles III when he said that the young king might already be on his way out. 
Nostradamus also said that this master would be overthrown by one who will have no mark of a king. This led to rumors that Prince Harry, who is younger than the current heir, Prince William, could become the next king of the United Kingdom. The astrologer also said, through the death of a very old pontiff, a Roman of good age will be elected. This meant that the Pope would be replaced soon. People will say that he weakens his see, but he will sit and bite for a long time. At 87 years old, Pope Francis has been having health problems that kept him from going to last year's UN climate meeting because he had trouble breathing and inflamed lungs. Since 2022, he has had to use a wheelchair because of an injury to his knee and a swollen muscle. In spite of this, he usually uses a cane or chair to get around and needs help to stand up. As a child, the Argentine Pope had part of one lung cut out because of breathing problems. He also speaks softly most of the time even when he's not sick. He had surgery in 2021 to remove a piece of his colon, and he had surgery last year to fix a stomach hernia and get rid of scar tissue from the surgery. The impact. Pope Francis's recent comments about the British royal family have caused a lot of interest and debate. Not only have these revelations caught people's attention, but they also shed light on the monarchy's long past of scandals and disputes. This new information adds a new layer to the ongoing discussion about the future of the royal family, especially since the institution is already under a lot of scrutiny. And this isn't a new problem for the British throne, though. Starting with Edward VIII's shocking abdication in 1936, which shook the institution to its core, to the more recent problems in Prince Charles and Princess Diana's marriage, as well as the claims that Prince Andrew is connected to convicted criminal Jeffrey Epstein, the royal family has been in a lot of public scandal. These events have made it harder for the monarchy to keep up its image as a source of security and continuity in British life. Even though each scandal has made people less likely to trust the institution, the monarchy has surprisingly survived, always changing to fit new public views. In any case, Pope Francis's comments are a new threat to the government. If what he said turns out to be true, it could hurt the royal family's image even more and make people want more openness and accountability. People are always talking about rumors about the monarchy, and this new development could be the start of a big decline. People in public are being held more and more responsible for their actions, so the royal family might find it hard to handle this latest problem without making big changes. On top of that, the statements of Nostradamus, a French seer who lived in the 1600s, add to the confusion. Nostradamus is known for his vague but often eerily accurate predictions. He is thought to have seen important events in history coming, from Napoleon's rise to power to the killing of John F. Kennedy. Whether you believe these statements were true or not, it is hard to miss the similarities between what Nostradamus wrote and what is happening now. Adding to the tension, some see his prophecies as referring to the end of a famous European house. Many people think this could be about the British royal family. If these interpretations are correct, it could mean the most important change in the monarchy's position in hundreds of years, leaving everyone to wonder what will happen to this long-standing institution.